Okay, gagawin na natin yung reversing reversing journal entries. Reversal journal entry number 1. The date would be June 1, 2019. Ang date lagi ng reversal journal entry is yung first day of the subsequent accounting period. So, kung ang accounting period na to ng adjusting entry ay for May 2019, therefore, the reversal journal entry would be dated ng June 1, 2019, which is yung first day ng next accounting period. So, yung accounting period ng June 2019, yung adjusting entries ng June 2019 would be reversed ng July 1, 2019. So, adjusting entry ng July 1, 2019, mare-reverse siya ng August 2019 and so on. So, ito, date ng reversal entry is first day of the next accounting period which is June 2019. Debit, i-reverse lang natin itong ginawang adjusting entry. Debit, salaries, payable. 1,800 credit salaries expense 1,800 Magbabalik na rin lang natin yung ginawang adjusting entry Next, reversal journal entry number 2 Date is June 1, 2019 Debit Interest Payable 3,500 Credit Interest Expense 3,500 Reversal Journal Entry Number 3, June 1, 2019, debit consulting revenues, credit accounts receivable, 5,300 pesos. Okay, tapos na tayo sa kalahate ng Step number 10, which is yung pag-journalize ng reversing entries. Yung sulit natin gagawin is yung posting na ng journal, ng reversal, reversing journal entries sa ledger. Bago tayo mag-proceed sa posting ng reversing journal entries o reversing entries, mapaniwanag muna namin sa inyo kung bakit ang reversing entries is a bookkeeping technique na optional. So, optional siya meaning kung accountant ka, pwede mo siyang gawin, pwede rin hindi kasi optional. Okay, ito yung mga transactions na kinuha na galing sa ating accounting cycle step number 2. Kinuha namin yung mga transactions relating sa salaries ng employees. Okay, meron tayo dito May 2, May 13, May 27. And sinama na namin yung adjusting entry. Okay. Nung May 2 daw, May 2, konting reko lang tayo, the business hired an office assistant and an account executive each with a 7,800 monthly salary or each is to receive 300 pesos per day for the 26-day work month. They started work immediately. So, ibig sabihin lang no, nung May 2, yan, and ito pala yung, ano, um, ito, assume natin na ito yung calendar for the month of May. Assumption lang to. So, May 2, dito, pumasok yung um, hired Two employees, yan. Two employees na lang. 300 per day ang kanilang sweldo for the 26-day work month. Ibig sabihin lang nun, yung Sunday, 
is yan lang yung araw na rest day nila. Meaning, wala silang pasok ng Sunday. May pasok sila ng Monday to Saturday. 300 pesos per day. So, na-hired sila, nag-work sila immediately nung May 2. May journal entry na kailangan. Wala. No journal entry needed sa May 2 kasi hindi siya transactions affecting assets, liabilities, and equity. So, hindi siya financial transaction. Nung May 13, debit salaries, expense, credit cash. So, ito na yung time na nagpasweldo si entity ng kanyang empleyado. So, sa May 13, yan, May 13, dito na nag-record si business ng salaries, expense, credit cash. May 13, the entity pay salaries every two Saturday. So, kada, kada Saturday sila nagpapasweldo. Ang amount ay 6,600. Bakit 6,600? Meron tayo, ang rate ng empleyado ay 300 pesos per day. Times the number of working days. So, from May 2 hanggang May 13. So, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 days nagtrabaho yung mga empleyado. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung sweldo ng per employee. Eh, dalawa sila. Times 2 employees. 300 times 11 days times 2 employees equals 6,600. So, kaya yung 6,600. Okay. Ibig sabihin lang nun, kada sweldo ng empleyado, doon lang yung point na nagre-record si business ng salary expense. Okay, next. May 27, so debit ulit salary expense credit cash. Okay, nagpasweldo na naman si entity. Kasi nga, every 2 Saturdays siya nagpapasweldo. The entity pay salaries every 2 Saturdays. So, 13 yung huling sweldo. So, 1 Saturday yung 20 to Saturday 27. So, dito siya nag-record ng sweldo. Debit salaries expense credit cash. At what amount daw? Ang sabi, 7,200. Bakit 7,200? Empleyado is 300 per day times Anong mumultiply natin dyan? Number of working days. So, from 15 hanggang 27. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 days. Ilan ang empleyado? Dalawa. 300 times 12. That is 3, 6 times 2. 7,200 Okay Kung ito ang kung ito ang assume calendar ng May Following the pattern ganito naman ang assumption for the calendar of June Okay, Wednesday yung 31 so Thursday would be the June 1 first day of the accounting period and itong calendar na June na to, is wala to sa ating reference book na ginagamit. Ito ay theoretical example na lang namin. Para mas mapaliwanag namin sa inyo kung bakit or kung paano nag-work ang reversing entries. And bakit siya bookkeeping technique na optional. Okay. Napansin natin, sa kada pasweldo ng empleyado, is... Doon din yung point na nag-record siya ng salaries expense. Kung kailan, pinapabaya, kung kailan binabayaran ang empleyado, yun lang yung point na mara-record yung salaries expense. So, following the trend or following every, following yung pattern ng entity every two Saturdays, May 27 is the last um, salary day. One Saturday is June 3. 
to Saturday is June 10. So, sa at June 10, dyan na magre-record ulit si entity ng salaries, expense, credit, cash, kasi sweldo ng empleyado. Okay, at what amount? 300, the rate of, the rate per day ng employee. Times, ilang working days. Okay, that is from 29 hanggang 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, 12 working days from May 29 to June 10. 12 times 2 employees, 7,200. Okay. Tama ba yung magiging record ng June 10? Actually, mali. Mali yan. Bakit? Kasi may salaries expense na na-record ng June 2019. Pero actually, May 2019 dapat siya na-record kasi ito. Gawa ng tatlong araw na to. Dapat sa May, i-record yung salaries expense. Kung kailan pumasok yung empleyado, doon din dapat i-record yung kanyang corresponding salaries expense. Kaya nagkaroon tayo dito sa May 31 sa May 31 ng adjusting entry. So, dito May 31 daw adjusting entry debit salaries expense credit salaries payable dahil hindi pa siya bayad sa June 10 pa siya babayaran that is 1,800 bakit 1,800? 300 times 3 days times 2 employees okay ganito yung maging itsura ng transaction ng salaries expense and salaries payable. Salaries expense would have an adjusted balance of 15,600. Therefore, yan din yung subject, yan, yan din yung amount na ikoklose sa ating closing entries dahil yan ay expense account. Ikoklose siya dahil sa accounting cycle step. Eight. So, ang balance niya is zero dahil sa closing entry. And salaries payable, so ito'y balance sheet account, hindi naman ito kinoclose, 1,800 dahil sa adjusting entry. Okay. Assuming na June 2019 na, so theoretical ulit. Ito na yon nag-record yung June 10, so ganito ang magiging itsura sa ledger. June 1, 2019. <coughs> magpo-post to ng 7,200, mag-i-increase ang salaries expense ng 7,200 sa month of June. And syempre, credit cash. Lagyan na natin dito. Dito na nasa gilid. Cash. 7,200. That is June. Ah, sorry. It should be June 10. June 10, 2019, 7,200. dahil dito. Ngayon, tama lang ba na ang salaries expense ay 7,200? Mali. Dahil may, ito ay expense ng June, pero may nakapaloob dyan na sweldo na pertaining sa May 2019, which is dapat siyang i-record ng May 2019. Since sobra-sobra yung nai-record na salaries expense ng um, June 2019 dahil nga napasama yung tatlong araw ng May sa June expense. Yan na yung purpose kung bakit kailangan ng reversing journal entries. So kung susundin natin to ganyan na mangyayari kapag hindi natin sinunod yung reversing entries kapag hindi natin siya ginawa so kaya June 1 
kaya nagkaroon o kaya kailangan ng reversing journal entries debit salaries expense credit ah sorry debit salaries payable pala kasi reversing entries credit salaries expense na 1,800 so sa kapag pinos natin yan 1,800 credit salaries expense for the month of June therefore ending balance ng June 20 19 would be 5,400 kapag meron tayong reversing journal entry ang salaries expense lang ng June ay 5,400 which is equivalent naman siya sa working days from June 1 to June 10 that is 1,2,3,4,5,6,7,8,9 pesos rate ng employee per day times 9 days times 2 employees dahil dalawa yung empleyado. So ano yung ano, ano yung ibig sabihin noon? So ibig sabihin lang naman noon, yung reversing journal entries is pinaprevent niyang ma-record ang expense ng May 2019 sa June 2019. Na pe-prevent niya yung pag-record ng transaction ng current month sa next month. So, ito, kaya kagaya nito, to reversing entries na itama yung salaries expense for the month of June. So, kaya siya ginagawa para ma-assure na, para ma ma-certain natin na yung expenses for the current month is actually yun lang din talaga yung expense for the current month. Walang nakahalong expense from previous month. And at the same time, kung may debit na, kung may credit na salaries expense dito, which is reversing journal entry, ang reversing journal entry sa salaries payable naman 1,800 ito yun so magiging zero yung salaries payable for the month of June 2019